they lost was back in early September to the Stanford Cardinal. Stanford in white, Penn State in blue, and the championship match underway, and Megan Hodge registers the first kill. And if she keeps hitting deep like that, expect a lot of balls to go down, but over the block, six foot three inches, huge jumper, a lot of potential for the future. Both of these teams hit extremely well, while Penn State might have the advantage at the net. They are one of the top blocking teams in the country. And not only is she a great hitter out there, Megan Hodge, but she intimidated the hitter on that play, Waller, a little bit by forcing her to hit out of bounds. Bryn Kehoe goes to Cynthia Barboza. That's put back by the Penn State block. Now Kleinman out of the back for the kill. The precocious 6'5 freshman from Manhattan Beach. Cynthia Barbosa, the junior from Long Beach, California. A lot of eyes on her with big expectations in this championship match. And her first serve is awry. More awry than I might have expected. I think she's been feeling a little bit of weight on her shoulders throughout this tournament, having some passing, some ball control problems last weekend and earlier in the semifinals. And Hodge puts her first serve into the net. Francie Girard, the senior from Book Brooklyn, enjoying the best season of her career. She was a member of that championship team in 04, and she serves the ace. Didn't start playing volleyball until high school when uh, the coach at her high school plucked her out of a PE class and said, hey, you're coming with me. You've got a future on the volleyball court. And here she is, almost finished at Stan with a Stanford degree. What a story. 4-3 Penn State early on, and Krista Harmato, the junior from Aliquippa, All-American this season, and an ESPN The Magazine academic All-American as well. Chance now, Barbosa the pass to Bryn Kehoe. They'll look to Kleinman again, dug up by Hodge. Glass will give it back to Hodge, running the pipe out of the back. We will see that both from Hodge and from Kleinman. Kleinman especially been playing great defense, but Hodge starts the play with the dig, then comes barreling down, hits that what we call a pipe set right down the middle of the court, but it's a backcourt set. She is so good at broad jumping. She's a very effective hitter on that play. You pointed out from watching Megan, it's almost as if she's hitting at the net when she attacks out of the back row. That's how much ground she can cover. In fact, on that last play, she landed only two or three feet from that center line under the net. Aaron Waller, who has come on strong lead in the season for Stanford, now serving. Last bumps it to Fawcett. Looking for the touch. Doesn't get it all tied up at five apiece. Not only do we have six All-Americans on the court tonight, Cards, but we have some of the hardest hitters in the country as well, and Fawcett is among that list. Glass, Hodge again out of the back. Akinrata, we've got a piece of it. And Alkia will go to Kleinman right at Whole House. Free ball, Stanford. Kio, the quick set to Akinrato for the kill. Well, you were just talking about powerful hitters and great players. Talking to the head of USA Volleyball yesterday, he said he hasn't seen a final this deep in potential Olympic talent in a number of years. Four almost guaranteed virtual locks to play in the Olympics. Akinrato. Kleinman, Barbosa, and Hodge, and three others we can talk about in a bit. That, of course, was Doug Beal, and probably just a matter of whether or not any of them would be good enough to make the 08 team, and certainly in line for the uh, 2012 U.S. squad. And Kleinman got a touch, and Stanford is up 7-5 in the opener. Well, absolutely, those other ones would be players like Hermato, Her Fawcett, and even the freshen, freshman Ariel Wilson, who actually got her first start of the season against Stanford much earlier in Penn State's season. The block for Kleinman, it's a 5-0 run right now for Stanford. And this is unusual in this tournament. Wilson has almost never been stopped. She's been hitting an astronomical percentage here, almost 700 in NCAA play. 
That means almost zero errors because, of course, it's your kills minus your errors divided by the total, hitting 667 coming into tonight in their previous five matches of the tournament. Alicia Glass, the sophomore from Leland, Michigan. You mentioned the uh, match earlier in the year back on September 15th on a neutral floor. It was a 3-2 thriller in which Stanford out hit and out blocked Penn State on that night. Akinraro looking for a piece of the floor, doesn't get it. The tip from Blair Brown and it ping pongs around and the freshman who also made her debut in the starting lineup earlier in the year against Stanford gets the kill. And been doing a great job and that's one of the reasons why they've only lost two games in about two months. Last time they were really challenged was playing at Wisconsin in that tough Big Ten conference. Akin Rottawo sliding over to the uh, outside for the kill. 9-7 Stanford early in game one. It's best three of five to decide the championship. Kleinman, the top prep player in the nation last year out of high school, followed it up with a Pac-10 Freshman of the Year honor this season. And another point for the Cardinal. Well, so far, Penn State's, they, they had that lead and kind of given it up. And we saw that two nights ago in, against Cal. They'd have a lead and let, just kind of get a little careless with the ball, let Cal right back into the match. And that's what they've done here so far. Off the tough serve, they'll get a free ball here. Barboza dug up by Hodge. Glass bumps it back. Another chance for the Cardinal. Kehoe looks to Akinrado. No chance to pull that one up. Well, that was one of the big questions is, can Akinrado be stopped? Fawcett is a huge blocker for Penn State. She may even be the better blocker than Hodge, so they got the matchup on that play that they wanted, but not the result. Palooka coming off a 26-kill performance in the semifinal win over SC, which tied her career high, and then Wilson, the freshman from Broadview, Illinois, with the counter. She did not have a hitting error in the semis against Cal. And the ace from Fawcett, that's her fourth of the weekend. Nicole already with more aces this year than she had in her first two seasons combined. And you can see she really gets a rip on that ball. It's very hard if it goes between two players, and that's what she was able to do the previous attempt. It's very hard to get into for those two players, one of them to get those arms into that scene. Akarotowo, a junior from Plantation, Florida, who uh, has plans to try out for the Olympic team and then eventually go to medical school. Hodge at Akarotowo, the overpass over to Penn State. Wilson, got it. This is one of the, the things I see as a big key to this match. Stanford is now with Akin Rodwell out of the game because she's in the back row. The three times she's not in the game, if Penn State can rack up more of an advantage than the deficit they might get when Akin Rodwell is in the front row, then Penn State's got a great shot. There they go. They pick up a point without Akin Rodwell on the floor. This almost caught up with him late in the USC match when she was off the floor on match point and her teammates rallied and she was able to get back into the game when they won it. And in fact, Coach Dunning said, boy, that was probably a gift from the volleyball gods. I don't want to even measure my blood pressure right now because we were in our weakest rotation. Akinwadawa was out. Um, it was this very, ro the previous rotation with Barbosa and Gerard hitting, but they didn't have to earn match point or didn't have to stave off match point. The serve went out instead. Down to dig it up is Alyssa Dorico, the freshman from New York State. Waller sliding behind, glass covers. And then into the net from Whole House, Point Stanford. Well, sometimes you want to be aggressive, and Whole House was trying to be aggressive on that one, standing on the floor but swinging at it rather than just putting over the easy free ball. But there are other times you just have to make the other team play it. Each side, of course, has a player with a different jersey. That is the Libro, basically a defensive and a serving specialist. They cannot attack. And did you notice how fast that set went out to Megan Hodge? It seems as though Penn State has sped up its offense. Coach Rose said he wouldn't have minded doing that last year, but Glass has improved so much, she is capable of locating that set very well this year, and so they can really put pressure on other blockers. Three kills for Hodge. 
And uh, Penn State's going to dispute this point, and they have a very good beef because the ball went into the net, not into a Penn State blocker. But both coaches were up. They both think they're right. Dunning was stood up at first. Now he's arguing it. They're going to switch Let's it here and give it to see. Penn State. I don't think that cleared. Hodge was all over it, but it actually has to hit her arms above the tape of the net for that to be considered a touch. Good job by Joni Powell to check with Margie Ray, who had the better look at it over on that side. And the point goes to Penn State, though, within one. Barbosa with an aggressive swing. Timeout here at the National Championship midway through game one for Luca Acanorado with a kill, high five and her teammates. Feluca on the move when we come back. Back here at Arco Arena in Sacramento for the national championship. Stanford with the edge over Penn State midway through game one. Let's check in now with Kathy Nelson. Thanks, Beth. You know, the holidays is always a busy time, but think about what Stanford middle Feluca Akinwadato went through this week. Not only did she have to prepare for this, she had to take finals like the rest of her Stanford teammates. But in addition to that, she had to pack her bags, put everything in storage because she's not going to return to Stanford for spring term. She's heading to Colorado Springs where she has an opportunity to train with the national team. Hopes to be one of 12 that'll be wearing the red, white, and blue for the USA this summer in Beijing. And Kathy, she uh, might need another bag or some more luggage to bring home all the hardware she's collected out here. An All-American Award and then last night the National Player of the Year Award as well. Going to the Stanford Middle who is uh, rotated out of the game right now. Kleinman off the block. Rico got to it. Barbosa with the pass to Kehoe. Back to Alex Kleinman. Again, Whole House digs it up. Wow, what defense by Penn State. And it pays off. Whole House and Dorico doing a phenomenal job there. Kleinman goes right over the top. Whole House does what we call kind of a sprawl. She goes on the floor and saves it just two inches above the floor there. Those signs said it all. Dig it, Dorico, and Berta digs the whole house. Penn State picks up another point, and we're tied up at 15 all. And this is what we need to follow. Penn State getting back in the game while Akinrodwo is still out in those weaker three rotations for Stanford. That's four points already for Penn State with Akinrodwo out. So any opponent really hopes to get more of a plus advantage in those three rotations than they may lose with Akinrodwo back in the front row. Plus five right now with Faluka sitting. And the Nittany Lions go up by two and a timeout called by John Dunning. going Penn State's way. One of the reasons why is a touch of glass. Here we come back. Welcome back to the national championship match here in Sacramento. Penn State leading Stanford. Let's check in with Kathy Nelson. Thanks, Beth. You know, these Penn State attackers get so much credit for their great offense, but a lot of the credit needs to go to sophomore setter because she has improved probably more than any player in the country. We're talking about Alicia Glass. And one of the reasons is her coach, Salima Rockwell, used to be Salima Davidson, was a terrific player for Penn State, was a three-time All-American setter, and she has taken Glass under her wing and done a terrific job of turning into not just a great athlete, but a great setter. Sliding down the net, and it will go to Penn State. There is Salima Rockwell, a three-time All-American setter for the Nittany Lions. And it was when these two teams faced each other much earlier in this season that Glass was going through a bit of a tough time. She talked about it yesterday in the press conference, but gave her coach a lot of credit for talking her through. Coach Rhodes was thinking about using a two-setter offense. She wasn't starting part of the time. Glass has really solidified, and that's a big reason why Penn State is in this final tonight. Akinrodawo comes back on for Stanford. Nicole Fawcett over the top of the block and did not get the touch point for the Cardinal. And Glass had a little bit of a miscommunication. Coach Rose talked last year that he was disappointed she didn't make the all Big Ten team. She took it as, well, he was disappointed in her, but he was really disappointed in the other coaches yeah. who didn't vote her <laughs> onto the Big Ten. Took him a little while to get that straightened out. 
And interesting, too, a little side note on both of the setters tonight, actually. Uh, the second generation of Title IX women, both of their mothers were their coaches when they were younger, Alicia Glass and Bryn Kehoe. And there is Bryn setting up Faluka, and there's no defense for that. I was just going to say, Faluka Akinrodwo back in the front row. That's her fourth kill, and she is so efficient that the Stanford Cardinal is efficient when she's in the front row, but you've got to rotate in volleyball, and she's got to sit out and get cold, and that's when opponents are much happier not having to face her. Glass dumps it over on two. Good decision by the sophomore. And you'll notice that she likes to use her right hand more than her left on that play. It makes it a little tougher for the blockers to, to stop her, and she's very effective with that right. But as soon as that right comes up, the blockers have to be thinking it's coming at us. Kleinman gets the kill. The freshman doesn't seem affected uh, by her first appearance here on the grand stage. Four kills now for Alex. And how about the digging show she put on the other night? 30 digs after getting 23 in the regional final against UCLA. The tallest player on the court playing some of the best defense. Back-to-back -back career highs for her in the dig department. And another kill for Faluka to tie it up. <laughs> it's, it's going to be like Penn State falls behind when Akinrodo comes in the front row. Then they go ahead when she's in the back row, and it's whoever's is where she's going to be at the end of the game. As to who, it's kind of like a fast break basketball or football yep. game. Whoever has the ball at the end wins. Penn State's in blue. Stanford is in white. The third time in the last 10 years that these two titans of the volleyball court have met to decide the national championship. They split their first two matchups. Now the Cardinal and the Nittany Lions squaring off here in Arco Arena in Sacramento. Penn State on a 25-match win streak. Their last loss was in September to Stanford. They have not dropped a game through the entire NCAA tournament. Stanford, meanwhile, had its hands full in both their quarterfinal matchup with UCLA and then a nail-biter against USC in the semis. And Kehoe now able to dump it over. These are the only two programs that have appeared in all 27 NCAA tournaments. Stanford didn't have very far to go, and Penn State has come across country. Although neither team had to travel at all in the first four rounds. They both hosted sub-regionals and regionals last two weeks. As Penn State gets the kill, in fact, Stanford has been within the uh, state of California for every single match they've played in the tournament against other California teams. It's been an interesting short road for them. Out of the back, Kleinman right at Whole House. Glass sets it cross court to Hodge and the block from Keogh and Gerard sends it back. Nice block, but boy, was that a nice blind back set by Alicia Glass to get it out in a pretty good position for Hodge to put that ball away, but Kehoe and Gerard do her one better with a, a well-formed block, no, no space between their arms. Bryn with the service error, the first ever freshman four years ago to set her team to a national championship, running a 5-1 offense. And she and Gerard were starters and have been starters their whole career. And they have met, they're have they now in their third final in four years. And so competitive, that's amazing to be in almost every final of a career. When you talk about the folks around the Stanford program, that's the first thing they say about Keo is her competitiveness and her fire as Harmato scores in the middle. You are right. She gives her mom a lot of credit 